God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Please be seated. One of the lovely things that has happened to me in my life of late is the privilege of serving on the steering committee of the Seminary of the Southwest, where Jared and I attended seminary. When the call for nominations went out two years ago, it was really almost as a joke that I put my name forward because I graduated in 1985 and most of my classmates had retired. And I was certain that I had done my duty, but that I would not be elected. Well, that was not the case. And I volunteered to work on the Blandy Lectures. Dean Blandy was the first dean of the seminary, and each year we celebrate him. This year has been a true blessing because it introduced me to the work of the poet and author Shehab Nye and the writing of one of the seminary professors, Jenna St. David. A more appropriate name for a seminary professor could not be found, St. David. I had been devouring her book, the brain and the spirit. St. David, who is a neuroscientist, literally encountered a theologian who changed her life and her studies. And I must say, she set me on a path that has certainly changed my understanding of the scriptures. She introduced me to the concept of slow listening, Even the arrangement of her book encourages this slow listening. The chapters are each divided by icons and poetry. And so you are encouraged to stop as you encounter these distractions that hopefully lead the reader to thoughtfulness and slow listening. So with all of that in mind, I went after the Old and New Testament stories in today's reading. My first reaction was that I had been hijacked. Surely the lectionary did not expect me to preach on these lessons. I want to preach on the good news, not hellfire and damnation from Amos, and the parable about those pitiful bridesmaids that were lazy and did not restore their old oil for their lamps, and the rotten groom was probably drinking with his buddies and the rest of the village and was late for the wedding procession. Then I was reminded of St. David's book because when I saw the lessons, I had to choose to be still and to listen. Slow listening and a reminder from the theologian Parker Palmer encouraged me to look at what was being said and what might bless me and hopefully bless some of you. Parker Palmer says that our hearts can break in one of two ways. Either we shatter shatter into shards of shrapnel that may injure others, or we break open at the core and love pours out. We either shatter into shards of shrapnel that may injure others, or we may break open at our core and love pours out. And I want to break open in my core and hear what Amos and Matthew were saying. And in practicing slow listening of the scriptures and in my life, I wanted to learn how to break open and hear what others are saying to me. To be open to the danger of loving and listening in a manner that had not always been mine to claim habitually learning to listen and to protect myself and others from the shrapnel that might injure. In the Amos lesson, we run headlong into a mighty prophet. He was active in the first half of the eighth century. Israel was mighty, very strong at this time, but the prosperity led, big surprise, to gross inequities between the classes. The poor were getting poorer, and the rich were getting richer on the backs of the poor. Amos, who is a farmer from the southern kingdom, went after the rich in the northern kingdom. And as we read his writing, it is hard to find the light. 
God, through Amos, clearly tells the people that the day of the Lord will be darkness and there will be no light in it. He says, take away your music and your worship because the Lord will not listen, nor will the Lord accept. It is at this point that I had to be totally still. The words of the prophet ancient of Amos are most ancient and modern, written in the eighth century. They can certainly apply to the world in which we live right now. Yet in listening, we also hear words that call us to hope, that call us to purpose, that call each of us to a way of life and love that we can devote ourselves to from now on until we die. Let justice roll down like waters and righteousness like a flowing stream. Let justice roll down like waters and righteousness like a flowing stream. Each of us in hearing that and holding that close know if we adopt that as our work, we can open up the possibility of love and justice among all people. And in the gospel lesson, I listened slowly. I listened over and over. And in truth, I was more than a little dismayed by Matthew. Where is the love and where does it pour out? I think the love in this encourages us to realize that we are responsible for our own relationship with God and with others. We must be spiritually and mentally prepared for what lies ahead of us. And no one can do it for us. No one can decide how it is that we must live. And as Jenna St. David encourages us to do is to look at our lives, our reactions to life, and what motivates us what motivates us to either listen, to be still, or just simply react. So often fear motivates one. We cannot hear or listen if we are frozen in fear. We often want life to be very different than it is, so we look for other ways that through listening, praying, centering, to change what we do not like, what we cannot accept, and I encourage you to start a journey or to continue one that allows you the luxury of slow listening, of praying, of centering yourself in such a way that you can hear the good news, that you can see the good news of God and can live that out in your daily endeavors. We are celebrating Stewardship Sunday today and I remember distinctly how much when I was a little girl, I did not like this Sunday. My daddy, who was very, a very generous man, would always complain when two or three people from the church would come and ask him for a pledge. His question to them always, to their dismay, is, well, where have y'all been the rest of the year? Where have you been? And then, just before I started seminary, here I was sitting in a room being told how to be a visitor and to go out in teams to collect pledges. And Dan Roberts came rolling into my mind, and at the same time it dawned on me, there is another way. Why not trust the people in our parish and beyond to pledge what they could and what their hearts lead them to pledge? Why not tell the story, our story, and give our folks the opportunity to listen, to pray, and to be faithful in all the ways that they can? And so here we are. I hope you've had the opportunity to slow listen to what has been said on Sundays by our speakers. I've listened to them with a new heart and an open mind, I have found those on the internet and I have practiced being still and slow listening. We are a faithful and loving congregation and we stand out among other communities as welcoming. And this is a priceless opportunity and one that we must continue no matter what. Please do not be afraid to commit to that vision let your heart break open, break open at the core, 
and allow your love to pour out. Amen.